most people recognize that out of all the developments in the blockchain and digital assets ecosystem, DeFi is potentially the most transformative, right? It's also, in some ways, the, the furthest afield from being able to kind of have widespread uh, adoption. But um, unlike, you know, in the early days, permission blockchain use case here or crypto here, is that there's not one institution in finance who doesn't have some path to being disrupted by DeFi, right? So everything else has been mixed to kind of opportunities and maybe threats. DeFi forces everyone to say, what does this mean for us if this actually happens? So everybody's paying attention, you're just not at the point yet where you've got kind of banks and asset managers yeah. engaging. Okay, this is a fantastic video by Robbie Michnik from BlackRock. Rip, uh, Robbie Michnik is the, uh, he was a executive of uh, Ripple. So Ripple executive Robbie Michnik now works for BlackRock leading their digital asset area. So Robbie Michnik, he's at the kind of, you know, BlackRock, one of the world's largest financial entities on planet Earth. And he was also a very high up person and executive for Ripple. So he's a great person to listen to because he's kind of the bridge between the hierarchy, in my mind, for Ripple and BlackRock. Often you see these people kind of it's an evolving doors or revolving doors of power. And it's kind of interesting to see that Ripple, the company, seems to be one of those revol revolving doors of power. As he spoke, every single financial institution at s somehow with their business models are going to be disrupted by this DeFi technology that we're seeing. And he kind of is very, very knowledgeable, obviously, in the space of DeFi because he was an executive at Ripple. So what I like about Ripple and one of the reasons why I invested in Ripple, the company, is because this uh, this company decided to work with the kind of with the regulators, with the incumbents, with the kind of status quo system, with the bankers. And we've seen all the partnerships with central banks and banks around the world and kind of ties to government, Federal Reserve, Bank of International Settlements, you name it. They have always been there in the room trying to work with these type of people. And going back to that famous interview with Gary Gensler, where the guy, the guy he was sitting to on stage said, what's going to happen with this disruptive technology is first they're going to ignore it, i.e. the banks and the powerful. They're going to ignore it and then they're trying to, they will try and quash it with their friends in power to try and bring lawsuits against it. And then the final stage of the model is they will be forced to adopt this technology. I think we're growing ever closer. Again, people like Christine Lagarde, very, very powerful, important people. When she speaks, people listen. Uh, she's very influential. And as she said, if banks do not use this technology, they are going to cannibalize themselves. None of us know exactly what's going to happen behind the scenes. None of these banks are going to openly say what they're doing before they actually do it. But Ripple seems to be in a fantastic place because they've worked from day one with these people. And you have companies like BlackRock that are filing for the Bitcoin ETF and the Ethereum ETF. But yet one of their kind of top guys is a former executive to Ripple. And it does, it's just one of those things that kind of makes you wonder. And then if you look at the board of directors that Ripple has, they literally have the dream team of anyone. Uh, for example, Rosie Rios, the 43rd Treasurer of the United States. She was the CEO of Bureau of Engraving and Printing at the U.S. Mint. She was also part of the Federal Reserve Transition Team. You have Sandy O'Connor, who the American banker described her as one of the most powerful women in banking. She was also the director of Bank of NY Mellon and the chair of the Federal Reserve Board. You have Craig Phillips, who between 2008 and 2017 was the managing director of BlackRock. So another connection to top position to BlackRock. He was also uh, held senior positions at Morgan Stanley and Credit Suisse. Just... On and on, the uh, team of directors that is working with Ripple is just the anyone of anyone. You have Warren Jensen. He was the ex-CFO, so the chief financial officer of Amazon. They really do have the dream team. I think this company is going to make a dent in the universe, which is why I invest in this space. They are the company that they often, to in my mind, are the grown-ups in the room that are trying to make this a professional space, make this a serious space, uh, connect them with all the kind of the major financial institutions around the world. I mean, you just have to look at kind of their 
the conversations they're having with regulatory bodies in places like Dubai and Singapore and Australia. You don't really see representatives of Bitcoin or Ethereum having these kind of conversations. For the last few years, Ripple has been under a, uh, a shadow, a cloud with this SEC lawsuit where people haven't really been able to use and uh, adapt to the technology. And so Bitcoin and Ethereum have been allowed to kind of fly high without really had having their kind of the major competition of Ripple. But now that Ripple, the company and XRP holders have this legal clarity, I think, you know, we are in the at that period of time where we're going to kind of enter this disruptive stage of this technology. And one thing that kind of was interesting, if I can find it, I will go, hopefully this doesn't cut the video out. Uh, let me see it. Okay, good, we're so far, it's not cut the video out. Okay, so this is the video of David Schwartz and he's talking about, no, that's not one. Here it is. This one here, I've played it on the previous video, but I will play it again. How many of you know the difference between payment and settlement? Not too many. So I, oh, a couple. All right, so let me just, just give you just a high level on this. I go to a, a restaurant and I pay with my Visa card and they let me go and they don't call the police saying that I left without paying for my food. That's a payment. But I still have to pay my credit card bill and somebody still has to wire money to the restaurant, right, or ACH or whatever payment system they use. It has, the payment has not been settled. Traditionally, payment and settlement have been completely bifurcated into completely separate systems. SWIFT is a payment system that doesn't do anything with settlement. And the problem with that is it makes it hard to do a good payment because like, you don't know if the recipient, you, you can't check the validity of the recipient. You don't know necessarily what the fees are going to be, what the exchange rate is going to be when the payment settles. So we built a system that, and the only reason they've been separated in institutional payments is historic. These systems date back from the old days when people had giant wheels of magnetic tape and the tape was like on the bank's transaction computer during the day and someone would physically carry it over to the settlement computer that talked to the other banks at night. And there was no way to settle during the day because the tape had to be on the computer that was handling the bank's transactions. It had to go to the settlement computer when it was done. Um, I'm not joking. I'm serious. If you if you you look at your glitzy like front end application for your bank and it's all really cool and you can access it on your phone and it's all really, you know, it's, it's 21st century, but you scratch just a couple of layers below the surface and it's like you took a time machine. If you're lucky, you're in the, the mid, seven, mid to late 70s. Like that's when these systems that plumb them. And just like I said on the previous video, this video perfectly demonstrates where he said all the kind of interface that you use with your banking systems and kind of financial systems, they may look like they're, you know, cutting edge 21st century, but actually when you uh, scratch just a little bit below the surface, you'll see kind of 1970s technology. This new technology is here. It's going to change the world. We are in this crypto revolution of DeFi. The cat is out the bag and you cannot put this technology back. They've gone through the phase of trying to ignore it, hoping it goes away. This is the incumbents, the big and powerful, the banks. They've tried to ignore it, hoped it go away. It hasn't gone away. So now they've tried to use their buddies in power to try and quash it. This hasn't happened. And they are now at the stage where people are going to have to kind of adopt and adapt to this technology or they're going to cannibalize their own business uh, as uh, in regards to what Christine Lagarde said. It's exciting times. Look at the board of directors that Ripple has. Have uh, We have people like David Schwartz, who is arguably one of the most intelligent cryptographers on planet Earth, pushing the use case of XRP. As an XRP holder, I think we're in a really, really strong position with legal clarity. We've got literally some of the best people in the world who have held positions at the top institutions of the world, Federal Reserve, government. Uh, you have a couple of uh, people that have served under presidents, uh, within the Ripple executive uh, kind of branch. Yeah, they have the anyone who's anyone kind of pushing this use case, connections to BlackRock, like I said, Federal Reserve, um, and multiple other banks around the world. I'm very, very excited for the future of XRP. I think we're at the right place. I think the rip, uh, that Ripple, the company, is going to drive the use case and is driving the use case of this technology around the world. And I think once ODL goes live, once you literally get one bank kind of using ODL, so on-demand liquidity in a real meaningful way, like David Schwartz says, there is no meaningful way, uh, they're not using it in a meaningful way. But as soon as you get one big financial institution using this in a meaningful way, I think it's going to be a domino effect. And I think that's when we're going to see the utility bull run. When that will happen is anybody's guess. We're in a speculative market, but all of us are kind of 
you know, if it had already happened, then price action would have already happened and it would have been too late for us to buy in into this space. So we are early if you're listening to this video now. I have full faith that this technology is going to go forward. And as Robbie Michnick, the um, right, let me go back to the first video. As uh, BlackRock Robbie Michnick, who is the ex-Ripple uh, executive, says every single financial institution somehow, somewhere in this business model is going to be disrupted by the technology of DeFi. We are kind of at this point in time now where they're going to have to use it or they're going to lose market share and they are not going to let that happen. Okay, a little bit of a short video today. I hope you liked it. If you like this video, please hit the like button. It helps push this video out to more people. If you're new to the channel, then please subscribe to the channel. And remember, this is just for fun. It is not financial advice. Thank you for listening.